after, uh, after watching the film, my comments stand uh, similar to what I made after the game. Uh, the program and the, the team did move forward. Um, they played more aggressively. They played, played more energetically. And um, there are areas of the team that executed at a higher level longer than what we had been doing. Uh, we did emphasize being able to run the ball more effectively after week one, um, as that was kind of a surprise that we weren't able to do that as much um, because we'd been consistent in fall camp. And I was glad to see that uh, play out as, um, as I had hoped, um, Albert Reed especially. We thought we needed a little bit more size and a little bit more durability there in terms of every down runs, and he did a really nice job. Um, we continued to deliver the ball well, um, throwing and catching. Uh, a number of drop passes or Kurt's uh, percentage would still be way up there. Cut down the turnovers um, about in half. Um, and, and while it might not have looked like it overall, um, big plays still remain uh, a challenge defensively because of execution and fundamentals. But in between that, against the type of team we were playing, there was actually quite a bit of uh, improvement that I saw there as well. Our punting game continues to be very, very strong, not only in terms of how Nick is kicking it, but our coverage. And, um, and so just overall, the, the mindset of the team with the execution at times is, was a step forward from week one to week two against a better team and more difficult environment. And, and so um, I enjoyed coaching our team on, uh, on Saturday because it was clear to me of the improvement and everyone saw it, uh, the team especially. And there's a gaining sense of optimism and confidence um, that is growing, and but part of it is just simply the time necessary for um, um, putting uh, new habits on top of old ones. As you know, old ha uh, the, the existing habits never go away. You have to build new ones that are stronger than the existing ones to then uh, become uh, the first source that, the, that you draw on, and so we're still working on that. Was really impressed uh, with some of the younger players still. Um, Has Hasis, when he got in at receiver, did a nice job. Bryce Hall at corner as he got in. And Jordan Mack, uh, all three of those young guys did a really nice job. Um, and most likely more to come still. So I'll answer questions, whatever ones that you might have regarding today. <clears throat> the, uh, the problems on defense, particularly on third down, have been you know, there for everyone to see. What are some of the encouraging signs yeah. that you've seen that maybe aren't as apparent to the uneducated man, the the, uh, the thing that's happening um, with four-man pressure, uh, the quarterback was hit uh, immediately on release on four of the um, four of the throws, and so that's without having to send any extra pressure. As we're putting a lot more focus right now on coverage and getting uh, some of the young parts in our secondary shirt up and the execution to some of the formations and adjustments, um, which. Uh, two of the two of the third downs in that game were just simply situational awareness and alignments and concentration, and so we have some growing pains that are apparent for everyone to see. Um, usually, uh, our system is phenomenal on third down, not only in pressuring the quarterback, but um, the amount of turnovers we create and different things. Um, and so, but it is sequential. We're starting with just the basics, and and. Both Chris Peace and Andrew Brown are doing a nice job with pressure with four people right now, which is going to have to probably remain for a while while we sure up the secondary assignments and, and position mastery back there, which is probably a slower process than any of us would want it to be, but that's where we currently are. Bronco, if my memory is right, I think when Al Groh was here and put in a 3-4, I think he said it typically takes a defense maybe a whole year before mm -hmm. they really, really kind of get it. Um, are, do you believe that? And, and what kind of a tall order is it for these guys to try to play your way of defense yeah. right out of the shoot like this? It, it, it's a tall order, but it's, a, it's a, a, a challenge that they all like and want, as well as myself. Um, and so we're, we're doing two things at the same time. We're systematically installing and building um, to have a great program over time and then trying to rush as quickly as possible without cutting any corners to get the execution up to speed as fast as necessary versus the variety, variety of opponents we're seeing. And the defensive staff is actually encouraged. Um, we, we are a numbers-driven team um, and staff, and I love the data. But I also uh, rely on intuition, and I can see some of the things between the numbers that are uh, that are improving, and and I think the fans will see that, and the followers of Virginia football will see that, 
at some point. I'm not sure when the breakthrough will happen. And my, my approach, just to reiterate, is, is very systematic and, and very progressional. Um, and I've summarized it uh, to, to each of you a couple times already, but I think I ought to probably go a little bit more in depth. When I say will before skill, there, there's a component there where uh, I want the mindset of our football players to be first and foremost um, in terms of how hard they'll go in relation to having those habits in place so we never have to go back and fix that part. And I've erred on the side of staying longer in that space um, rather than scheme and mastery and some of those things for the sake of setting that right once and for all. And, and that is a sequential process. And almost when they earn and I feel comfortable that they're trying hard enough and that's deep enough, it shifts to a lot more, um, uh, again, position mastery and execution driven things specific to an opponent. And, and I, I was encouraged they, they played uh, hard enough and, and aggressive enough in that game uh, for me to be more confident now that they're ready to handle more of the, the mastery part and the execution part. And so, uh, but again, I've done that sequentially with the long term in mind. Uh, that does not, not mean not wanting to win each and every game. Uh, but in my priorities and what I believe personally, man, the, how hard people try is one of the greatest gifts I can help them with. And, and eventually the execution will catch up. I keep saying that. That's partly by how much time and effort we put on it and into it. And that will continue to increase as each and every week and each and every day as we go along. And so uh, I would certainly hope that um, we end up playing really good defense this year. Uh, and it doesn't take a year. Uh, but uh, transitions are, are unique and challenging. It was interesting. Uh, I was a graduate assistant for Brady Hoke, who is the defensive coordinator at Oregon. And he came up to me before the game and he said, um, I can't believe how, how, hard, how long and hard it is to get him to go from two gap to one gap. He's doing the same thing on the opposite side. And um, those are just unique challenges when you inherit and take over new philosophies. But we have good enough players. We have good enough, a good enough mindset. And we have enough eagerness with the players and buy-in. They're, they're really fun to coach. I really like this team. And I'm anxious to help them have the success um, that I know they can have as quickly as possible. I, I don't know how long. But um, I, I, think it, I think it might be a little sooner than what people think, even though the early results have been um, not that. I just, uh, I'm encouraged, actually. I saw quite a bit of thing, quite a few things I liked in that game that, um, that in between the breakdowns are, I think we're gaining momentum there. And we'll continue to target the ones that are most visible to see in terms of big plays in the third down along the way. Your secondary has two really experienced guys at safety, and right now with Tim out, two relatively green guys at corner. How would you evaluate? You, you mentioned that, that those things have to be figured out in the back end. How have you looked at that secondary to this point? Wow, I, I really, uh, really have been impressed with Juan Thornhill since I arrived. And I think maybe I ought to speak collectively first. That there are, are four players defensively that, um, uh, with Tim being hurt, uh, um, the two inside linebackers in Micah and Zach and our two safeties, the, the other seven right now are, are relatively new, which is fun. I mean, they're, all these experiences are brand new and fresh to them, and, and every rep leads great experience. Um, Jordan Mack got a chance to line up against a, a world-class sprinter, and, and the ball went over his head and, as a true freshman. And we asked him today in the meeting, what did he learn? And he said, well, probably if you're covering someone that's Olympic sprinter, you ought to back up. So <laughs> that's a lesson learned. I mean, painful, but um, we're, we're, this is not life or death. We, we played, and we're playing better. Um, and, but he, with that coverage tag versus that alignment versus that player, he learned better back up. And if not, the ball goes over your head really fast. So he's part of the secondary, the way that we consider it. Um, Juan Thornhill. Um, learned on third and 39. Um, not necessarily was it his mistake. There should have been a free safety there, an experienced player that actually made a mistake. Um, uh, but it's probably good against the same guy that was in the Olympics to maybe back up a little more and make sure you're on top. And so there are some situational awareness things that seem so obvious to any of us watching that in real time versus tempo um, are being lost in the shuffle that my job, again, is to prepare them for that. And 
we're, we're just not quite fast enough in recognizing and aligning and adjusting in relation to not only the scheme, but the situation and personnel to be uh, playing at a high enough level yet. And, and so I think somewhere in there is the answer to your question. Um, on the other side, Miles Robinson um, is competing hard, not quite as far along in terms of sustainability as Juan. Um, uh, but Bryce Hall is coming along and, and giving us some depth there as well. Kurt seems to have done a good job when he's run of not subjecting himself to undue Goodness. contact. On the your final touchdown drive, he had the 13-yard run. I don't think that was a called play. Are you comfortable with how much he's running? Would you like him to look for opportunities if he can do it safely? It's, it's the right amount right now. Um, again, sequentially, and again, I'm, I'm not presenting a message of we don't want to win right now in every single game. Uh, but with, with um, the plays that are called for him to throw, the more that he can remain in the pocket with poise, go through his progression, and deliver the football before leaving, the better it will be for our team, not only in the short term, but the long term. The sooner and faster a quarterback has success leaving the pocket and running, the more likely he is to leave the pocket and run more frequently and faster in the future, which then takes your offensive execution from this usually to that, which then usually increases the, the chance for your quarterback to get hurt. And so um, it's just right. And there are some called runs with a uh, um, uh, lead draw and those kind of things happening now, and he's sliding appropriately. So I think we're right on the mark with how we're using him and his legs at this point. Coach, you're, you're obviously not going to talk to us about injuries, but you're right. you, you did you did have, uh, obviously, Donnie Dowling was, wasn't listed on the depth chart last week, actually came back to play. Was that something that happened during the week that uh, he just moved further along in the process? Was that something maybe you guys were planning on? And, and, and kind of how did he perform given the fact that he had that shoulder injury? I think the first or the, the only thing I could really speak to is Donnie is really tough and he's really committed and he has a really high pain tolerance. And... Uh, wasn't cleared or even imagined to be cleared until Thursday. And uh, a lot of that was because of just um, his resolve and resilience and, and him convincing uh, others that he could play. Um, and then the, uh, all the medical examinations bore that out. But he was, uh, he's really tough. I like him a lot. Coach Chris Wright with the Sabre.com. You were talking a little bit about Kurt uh, in pocket presence. How do you kind of evaluate that overall? Nine sacks through two games. Yeah, it looks like he's rolling out more than stepping up. Is there a fine line there? So he he is uh, Kurt is comfortable and very effective stepping out of the pocket, not up into the pocket, which which I love. Um, and so there, I don't think there's an advantage either way, other than the results that you get. And and to me, eluding pressure is is uh, either up or out, and or sometimes both. And I think uh, our, our issue right now that we're having um, that are leading to the sacks really isn't quarterback driven. Um, it's protection oriented. And so on Saturday, we actually uh, were more skilled and more execution sound and more consistent in our run game blocking than we were in our pass game blocking. And so uh, I don't think it's a, a quarterback issue right now. I think it's just um, our mid to downfield throw game and protection long enough to uh, allow that to uh, take a step forward. Um, pretty secure and confident right now in our execution of the uh, the shorter pass game and the perimeter pass game, but our protection and execution mid to deeper uh, is where we really need to improve. Hi, Bronco. Hey. Marty Hutlaw from the local NBC station here in Charlottesville. You averaged two yards per carry. Your rushing game against Richmond went all the way up to seven yards per carry against Oregon. Yeah. You, you addressed it in your opening statement, but what did you specifically work on this week that or during the week that made for such a dramatic improvement? Um, more more um, simply a recognition after game one that one of the strengths of our team, again, coming through fall camp in the spring, we assessed was our running backs and our running game. And somewhere along the, the, the line in that first game, um, uh, the emphasis placed and the production of didn't come to fruition. And we, we know as a program and as a team for this season, that has to be part of what we do. And so increased emphasis, um, increased planning, and some personnel changes in terms of how we use players and whom and where and in what type of runs. And, and I think that all led to an increased performance, which uh, 
we're all hopeful will will remain, and we think we need it to to have the kind of uh, offensive um, breakout that we need. We took a step closer in terms of really moving our offense forward, um, but there's more still. Hi, um, Kurt said the, after the game that maybe he's holding on to the ball too long. Is that something that's just a product of having not played that much in real games and? Um, also, uh, how would you evaluate him as a passer after two games? Well, I, I think Kurt is, uh, I'll go in reverse order, I think he's an excellent passer who's making uh, really strong choices. And, and I think Kurt is one of those leaders that will shoulder as much burden as possible. So when asked, um, maybe in relation to sacks or anything else, it doesn't surprise me at all that he'll say he's probably holding the ball too long. And that's, I think, what what any of us that are in a leadership position want to do is it's, it's our responsibility to make plays work, to help teams be successful, and to bear as much of that burden as, and responsibility as possible. In my opinion, he's, um, he's holding it appropriately. And, um, and our execution of the protection and routes and the entire collective of mid to downfield routes uh, in our pass game has to develop more. But I like what he's doing. Ronco, it sounds like you made some significant progress in kind of working the mindset of the players after the Richmond game to get them to go out there and, and, and play better. And um, they haven't won a road game around here in a long time. Yeah. Um, what did you, how did you assess kind of how they were out there and, and what do you look for this week with uh, going to Connecticut? We, we, were, we were so much more assertive, confident, and decisive. Um, a coast away than we were in our opener, and a little bit, a little bit as that, a little bit of that is time of just getting to know this team. And again, I was very surprised in week one of of what our team looked like in week one. And there were some expressions and some some looks and some body language that caught me by surprise that just simply allowed that to be a target and an emphasis, which it has to be for us to play the way that we need to. And we played significantly better week two than week one, regardless of where it is. And so rather than where we're playing, um, the approach to playing the game is what the focus has been on and what that looks like and what it sounds like and, and what it feels like. And so we're modeling um, as a coaching staff. Um, we're enc encouraging that. I'm showing it on film as players and, and what confidence looks like. And we did a much better job as an entire football program carrying ourselves and playing at a level that was increased and improved from the week before. Certainly a long ways to go, and I'm not presenting anything other than that. But I am clearly and optimistically presenting a step forward that I think we can build on, um, and I expect to build on uh, in terms of the mindset. Because again, hard, uh, it's hard to have a breakthrough as a program, organization, or a family without the belief and sincere belief that you're going to. And, and I think we are. And, and I'm pointing things out to our players where they think that we are. And again, the question is when. <laughs> um, just as a follow up, uh, how much can the positive feedback you give the team after the game, um, the way they can see on film that they were different than they were against Richmond, how much can that kind of confidence building and stuff just become a, mom, a mom, that momentum thing that kind of really feeds on itself? It, it, it's, it's the intent. Um, we're, we're working night and day and to improve this program in every way possible. And like I've said, the, the execution and what the football looks will actually catch up at some point. But the impetus before then is actually um, the belief and sincerity and work ethic that it takes to, to earn the chance to believe it's going to come along. And, and it will. Um, and I, I'm certain of that. Again, I don't know how long it's going to take, and the mountain right now is steeper and longer than what I expected, but um, it's invigorating. And there were, there were players after that game that said in their entire time at, at UVA they've never felt like they felt after that game. And that means in terms of confidence, enthusiasm, and optimism, and having fun. And there's no reason that when you're trying as hard as you can try and running into people and knocking them down and celebrating with your teammates that you still can't have um, um, positive um, feedback and, and putting new habits in place even though the score doesn't reflect that. And they're starting to, to understand that. Um, um, the score uh, is at the end. Um, but until then, 
being completely present in each moment and flying around as hard as you can with guys that care about and they're cheering you from the side, eventually that will become a formidable thing um, when the execution and consistency um, and position mastery all then is woven within that. And they see that and they see it sequential. So I think we're gaining momentum, um, uh, at least from a belief standpoint. Rocco, you didn't seem incredibly confident in your place kicking situation in the spring and leading through camp. Two games in, haven't attempted a field goal yet. We saw a missed extra point the other day. Where does that stand? How are you confident? Are you in, in Dylan at this point? Is there, is there still more options? That's still developing. Uh, it's still developing and still improving and still a work in progress. Um, we have a, a, a very clear range where we think field goal range is. And um, we've, we've implemented fourth down um, strategy as well uh, uh, through the first couple of games. That will continue. And then based on what I see in practice, we'll determine how frequently we kick and where we kick it from. And so work in progress uh, and just like the rest of our team. Was that 39 yards? Was that, was that in Dylan's range? So the, the 39 yard line, I had a specific range that the very first time we got within a given range, we were going to fake it. Um, if we were coming off, if not only where we were, but where we were on the field. And because of how Oregon aligned, and they aligned exactly like that. And uh, uh, we thought the, uh, the fake would work, and Oregon defended it. A little better than what I thought, but still, still thought we had a good chance at it. Bronco, so you, having not seen UConn yet, really a whole lot. I just looking at their personnel, a lot of size, multiple tight ends, that type of thing. What kind of a challenge does that prevent present to your defense with some of the limitations and size that you guys have? Uh, just, just a unique challenge that um, you have to make up with with leverage um, and and uh, intent, and so. When you play with great leverage and when you play with a fierce mindset, um, then it's not always the biggest who ends up having success. So our, our focus still, just to be really blunt, is very little on whom we're playing. I mean, we have so much work to do just on mastering our own schemes um, to accelerate that. Yes, it is in relation to opponent. Um, and we took a big step forward last week of moving toward opponent preparation. But there is so much right now that's still just about our own fundamentals, our own alignments, and our own techniques um, uh, that will give us even a better chance of, of then putting too much emphasis on whom we're playing. We're, we're, not, we're not to that point yet. Hey, Bronco, in the back. Uh, you talk a lot about the execution catching up and the other things you need to master first and those things. Just how much more of a challenge does that become because you are in the season now and you don't have as much oh. practice time and like you'll be traveling again this week and just things like that? It, it's a challenge, but it's it's a great challenge. And again, there's there's two opposing forces working. And this is for anyone that's in my position as a head coach and, and maybe inheriting a program that hasn't had success. Um, we are building uh, the foundation and for an amazing football program that will win consistently at the University of Virginia. And I know what that looks like. I know what it feels like, and I can see it. Um, and I see the, the um, discrepancy between that and how we're currently playing. And then here comes the next opponent. And uh, I'm not going to take shortcuts. That does not mean I don't want to win. It doesn't mean I'm not going to help our team prepare the best as possible. But I'm not going to jump around some of the things that have to be addressed now for the sake of having this program. I don't want to have to come back and repeat something that, that um, sequentially could hurt us uh, in having a great program. And so we're doing both at the same time. I'm going to do everything I can to help this team be ready for this week to win and to play well within the context of helping this program become exceptional over time. And time is the issue. We all get the same amount of hours in NCAA football. And, and um, players with a little bit more experience, programs with a little bit more experience, usually can uh, accelerate a little quicker. And so that's our task right now is to accelerate as fast as possible, but still make sure the building blocks are in, pa in place deep enough to move on. Stephen Wright had two tackles for yes. a loss the other day. Did the game, as they say, slow down for him a little bit the second time? His role matched, Stephen's role matched his um, current level of preparation. So he went into the game one against Richmond as a starter. And we gave him, much like I gave many of the defensive players, too much too soon. And so he played a role in the Oregon game that was a, uh, as a um, role player. And he was fast, he was fresh, he was assignment sound, and he could do his thing. And so 
as he continues to do that, that role will just kind of keep at being added as we go. And so I'm getting a lot clearer idea after two weeks now how much um, and what to do with each player um, that I didn't really have as clear a picture of after well, going into our first game. And it'll become clearer after week three, clearer after week four, and then we're into conference play. And so we're adjusting and, and manipulating with those things. And we noticed that as a staff, and we were really encouraged um, because he practiced well. We just gave him a role that suited better suited him better for where he currently is. And we were optimistic about expanding that even still. I believe you're 115th right now nationally in rushing defense. Mm -hmm. Clearly, that's something that you, you guys, is a, it's a big pillar of your program. Yes. That you have to stop the run first. What, what's been the, the issue so far? Has it been just fundamentals alignment? What, what, are, what, are, what can you point to? And there's been yeah two simple things. Um, alignment, assignment, then doing what you're supposed to do, and then simply the execution of doing it. I, I view execution as one or more players. Assignment is a single player. Execution is multiple players. And so uh, there was a, se a season um, in reference that, uh, man, I think uh, a team that I coached started one and four. And we might have been dead last in the country early on in rush defense and made some significant changes with some pretty young players over time. and. I ended up finishing, I think, at 25th or in the top 20. We have a similar task ahead. I mean, there's, there's fundamental work everywhere. Um, there's position mastery work everywhere to improve. And there's execution. That means multiple players at the point of attack. Uh, and then if for some reason it happens to break the line of scrimmage, uh, there's execution then in the back end that has to happen to, to get the players on the ground. So um, clear point of reference for where we're starting from, that hill is also steeper and longer than what I expected. Uh, but I'd rather know how steep and how long than guess, and now I know. And so we're working on it feverishly, and I think we'll see some improvement. The last time you went, you played BYU was, or excuse me, played UConn was last season, and you overcame three turnovers and still won that game. Mm. I think in, in fall camp, asked about, do you have a turnover margin number in mind that leads you to victories? Obviously, you've been on the minus side of that to this yeah. point. You know, how, how do you overcome that, and how do you get better in, in, in being the plus of that? Constant, constant attention, constant emphasis, and, and leading to the things that have happened on film and showing the outcome of what that leads to. Uh, and man, I, I don't remember uh, our game against UConn last year, um, nor the score. Um, as coaches, you know, we're on to the next one without, I mean, the, what the media, or at least in the head coach's position, you basically talk about the last week's game until you play the new one, but we're we're already on to UConn. And, but I don't remember really much about our game when I played it against them uh, a year ago. Uh, but I know what I know exactly what formula it is um, to give us our best best chance to win, and we're not there. And, uh, uh, good news, if you're looking for sunny side, is that we cut it in half. Bad news is is that's still not where we need to be. I'm not telling you.